A busy December of hoops kicks off on the bluff for Portland Pilot men's basketball. They will host VMI in a non-conference showdown at the Child Center, Shantae Leggins and his group going for their eighth win of the year. Good evening, everybody. Ann Schatz joined by my broadcast partner, good friend, that's Jennifer Mott. We like to call her Jay Mo, former standout at Gonzaga and one of the best coaches in the WCC you will find. All right, Jay Mo, let's talk about this game. We know the pilots have a 10-day break after this contest against VMI. As a former player and coach, you want to have a little momentum going into that kind of break. You, you sure do. And, you know, this is a great contest for them to get better, and that's what Coach Leggins has been talking about day in and day out. They came off a tournament where they were 2-1, and one, and, again, just getting better. They're, you know, fighting injuries and trying to find their way, and just a great opportunity to get better and play against a very good VMI team. This VMI bunch can fill it up. And man, if you like three-point shooting, stick around, because these guys will not hesitate to pull the trigger. Jake Stevens, even a big, can go low, but he can shoot it from the outside, too. Oh, he sure can. He's a preseason all-conference pick. They're big guy who can hurt you in a variety of different ways. He has stepped up his game. He's averaging 14 points a game, seven rebounds, has ranged out to three, like you said, and he's shooting 48% from the field, which is tremendous. He's versatile, like I said, and he is a difference maker for the cadets. Coach really talked about how great of a passer he is, too, for a center, and you'd love to have that with your big guy. Portland has to match his physicality and be ready to defend inside out. All right, VMI, winless on the road. How do they change that tonight? Uh, well, talking to Coach, really, transition D is going to be huge. And then communication at the defensive end, they're going to mix it up on Portland a lot tonight. Ball movement offensively and reads, depending on what Portland's doing. And then the last thing is rebound is going to be a huge key. The VMI head coach Dan Earl is so high on Tyler Robertson. Join the club, coach. <laughs> I know you love him too. Oh, man, everybody does. And why not? I mean, he's a leader who does it all for this Portland squad. He scores, he defends, he's solid day in and day out. He's averaging 16 points, eight rebounds a game. He can shoot it from anywhere creates and he really makes it happen in the paint for not a huge guy shooting 93 percent from the free throw line and has been a huge reason why portland has said success early pilots awfully tough at home keys to a victory tonight to keep that going well right when you talked about defending the three is going to be huge they can shoot it no personnel is going to be another one and then coach leggins talked about getting great shots in the half court and stay within their system the way they play defense, the way VMI plays defense, they're going to beg you to shoot quick, and he's got to make sure that they're patients offensively. Sounds good to me. All right, we're going to kick off the weekend with Portland Pilot men's basketball VMI in the house. Lineups and opening tip coming up next. Back on the bluff, the Portland Pilots hosting VMI. Crucial non-conference game for both of these clubs. As we mentioned in the open, this is the Pilots' last game before a 10-day break for finals. So obviously, the Pilots want to pick this one up. You look at the lineup for Shantae Leggins and his Portland Pilots, a lot of the usual suspects. And you know, we can't 
go into the starting lineup, Jen, without talking about Mo Woods. Moses Wood has been fantastic for these guys. Averaging 15 points a game, seven rebounds, and shooting 48% from the floor. He is a threat every time he touches the basketball. And Stevens makes this VMI club go, but he's got a lot of help from Camden Kerfman. Yeah, and he's really assumed the point guard role for Coach Earl, and he's their leading scorer at 18 points a game, and he's shooting the clip at 40% from the three-point line, and just a, fine, a fantastic dynamic guard. The Pilots coming off of that tournament stint, Incarnate Word Tournament, Jen, where they went two and one. They lost to Montana State in a close one and then beat Southeast Missouri State and the host club, Incarnate Word. So they come into this contest perfect at home with a little momentum. They sure do, and, and they've talked about protecting this house, and it's it's very important to them as a program to not lose at home. And, and I think the mindset coming into this game is, number one, get better and make sure you play well together. And they're really starting to get healthy after, you know, a, a little bit of a, a stint last week with Jack getting hurt. Had a good look at Dan Earl in his seventh year at VMI. Last year, the most wins for the Key Debt since 2014-15. He's got them rocking and rolling. The Key Debts are 4-4 four and four off of a thumping of Clark Summit, 88-40, so they've got a little momentum too, and we are underway. The Portland Pilots in their road gray, purple, and black. VMI, excuse me, their home jerseys, and then VMI with their roads, with their red predominant stem to stern. And you're gonna see VMI really pack it in the paint and really force somebody to shoot from the perimeter, and they switch a ton of screens in all spots. There's the pick. Ooh, how about VMI getting started with Manns throwing it down? Little three-quarter court pressure, just a tempo thing. And again, they're going to switch screens. They're going to switch all spots and kind of make you prove it from the perimeter, from the outside. Bigs are going to have to step up and really get positioned down low. Pilots threw that ball away with about four seconds on the shot clock. Let's see if they can get a better look and not kind of in desperation time. I love the down low presence by Silveira. And Zoe's done a good job. And again, he's a big dude in there. He's got to use his body. Nice little soft left hand jump hook. Silveira, a natural lefty. So he went to his strength for sure. Remember, Stevens will draw that big outside and he'll also pull the trigger. And Coach Liggins talked about this matchup being a little bit of an issue because Zoe doesn't defend well from the perimeter. Well, Manz has all of VMI points. There's one of those triples we were talking about. Oh, baby. And he's talked about defending the three-point line all season long, and they're going to have to do it today to have success. So an early 5-2 to two lead for the Cadets. Wild shot by Austin. Didn't catch iron, didn't catch anything. It's not a bad look for him. He's got that range. You just got to have some confidence going with it. Austin, a 33% three-point shooter. And you scout him, and you know that's his shot. Good D by Robertson to take away the back door. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Nice start for this VMI club. It's bottom getting into the act. Little three-quarter, one, two, two. Great job by the Pilots just getting the ball to the middle and getting it up the floor. VMI averages 35 triples in terms of attempts a game. 35, Jen, and they make 13. Yeah, I mean, they do a great job. I think they were second in the nation from the three-point line last year. And Wood, who makes a living from beyond the arc as well. Well, a great transition getting up the floor. Stevens, a big, you know, running hard. One and done. Robertson is looking for Wood, steps into the three-point shot, back rim and off, and will go the other way. I like that shot in transition for Moses Wood. And Portland wants to get it out and go. Austin picks up that foul. His first team's first. And, you know, you mentioned the three-point shooting of VMI. They've actually led the United States in threes per game two years straight. Wow. Yeah. And, the, you know, the thing is, when we talk to Coach Rule, I mean, his bigs shoot it from there. So, yep. you know, that's where that matchup becomes a little bit of an issue. Oh. 
Boy, there's a defensive misassignment, if you will. That was blown all the way. Layup drill. I, I don't think they knew the ball was even ready to come in yet. Naduka on the floor for the Portland Pilots. Road checking in for VMI. It's a 10 to five Kidet lead. Extra pass. Wood short on that shot. And you're going to see VMI all night long switch up their defenses. They're going to be in a switching man. They're going to be in a zone defense. Portland's got to do a great job of recognizing early and then getting things through, getting things through the high post. Rowe picks up his first, team's first. That's Naduka hammering those offensive boards again, forcing that foul. Robertson, you bet. He's just so smart. And when you need a bucket, that's your go-to guy. Bottom all the way to the rack again. Would try to reject that thing, but Bottom aggressively takes it to the cup. Again, a little three-quarter court press. It's more just tempo, like I mentioned earlier. They're in that zone. They're hoping that zone kind of keeps Portland on its heels. One and done, Mans with the board. You know, VMI showing the ability to score inside and out. Again, it's Mans. Quickly, he's in double figures. Ten points now for Mans, who averages six a game. Well, Mans on fire. I mean, right now, you got to make that guy put it on the ground and do something a little bit different. Boy, I really like the way Wood stepped into the seam of that thing. Yeah, and against that zone, the high post is always a great spot. Number one, not only getting shots, but high-low options. And it just hurts the zone if you can get it into the middle. VMI very hot from the floor. Just shooting at a high percentage. Six out of seven field goal attempts. You can't start any better than that. Well, and right now, Portland's got to put a little bit more pressure on the the shooter, make him do something a little different. Great. And we talked to Coach Leggins and mm, good answer by Wood right there. He's just been so solid, has eight points already for them in the half. He's had double figures in every game. It looks like he's gonna keep that pattern going. Multiple triples in all but one. Good look by Kerfman. Wants that one back. A chance for Robertson's tri triple to tie. That was off, and here comes VMI. Well, he was wide open on that one, Jen. He was, and again, not a bad option in transition. Good defense. Great defense by Naduka. How clever was that? Goes through the wickets of Rowe, and here come the Pilots. That was awesome. Oh, baby, and that all starts with Naduka and Austin hammers home the triple and we are tied up. Holy smokes. Well, you love to see somebody get on the floor and make something happen and just a great job of, again, getting Chris Austin a, a shot in rhythm. That's what he needs to get himself going. 8-0, pilot run. Uh-oh, says Conway, not so fast. That quiets the crowd. We've got a great first quarter. And we knew this game was going to be very competitive. I mean, a team that can shoot like this. We talked to Coach Leggins, and he's like, they really sit back and make you shoot it. And so far, Portland's answered the task. VMI with four three balls already. Again, they average 13 a game. Robertson. Wood picks up that foul. His first. Team second. You know what I love about Chris Austin is his first three-point attempt was an air ball. And as soon as Naduka kept this thing going, Chris was going to say, I'm a better shooter than that. I'll show you how it's done. Come on, Chris. Bury it. You got it.
Man, this first quarter, Jennifer Mountain rocking and rolling uh, both clubs red hot. How about Mo Wood? I mean, this is a guy that gives you double figures every game, is always going to light it up from beyond the arc. He just, he just is such a scorer. He really is, and he can play all five spots. I mean, that's a when you have that kind of kid that's that versatile, I mean, Coach Leggins loves it. He can bring the ball up the floor if he needs to. And so far off to a great start. Transfer out of UNLV is Mo Wood before that at Tulane. Finding a home here on the bluff. Smartly played by Conway as that shot was affected initially. Conway grabs the air ball and puts in the sweet little reverse 20 to 15. BMI back in their zone. Oh. Foul away from the ball. Naduka. Yeah, Naduka just got a little bit physical. I think he may have wrapped with his hands behind, and anytime you do that, it's going to be automatic foul down low. I love the fact that he's posting hard against Stevens, though. I mean, he's undersized, but, you know, as, as Coach says, <laughs> Draymond Green of Portland. There you go. True freshman has just been invaluable off the bench for the Pilots. That's good defense there by Naduka. And, you know, you, you talk about one of the valuable bench players for the Portland Pilots, and that is Naduka. But, oh, my goodness, you say goodbye to Jack Perry with that recently blown ACL for the Portland Pilots, and that really hurts Legs' rotation. It really does, and, and not that he just fills the stack, stack categories. It's his leadership. He's so smart on the floor. He knows what Coach Legs wants. And he's going to have to play a different role and be a different teammate right now. And you feel so bad for the kid, but uh, he'll bounce back. And, you know, now it's just an opportunity for somebody else to step up. And they'll learn. They'll learn real quick. They'll just coach him up from the sideline. I, yep. miss, I, I miss Perry already. Yep. VMI working it from the perimeter. Stevens guarded by Robertson. There's the switch. <laughs> Second chance opportunity. Quick shot there. And VMI pounding the offensive boards right now. Catch, shoot, drill, Conway. Wow. Yeah, good timeout by Coach Legs. I mean, you give a team like this three opportunities at the offensive end, you're going to struggle. I mean, VMI taking a shot with just one on the shot clock, and it results in another couple of opportunities, and they can the three. So it's 23-15, Cadets with the early lead. Great look at Shantae Leggins in his first year with the Portland Pilots coming over from Eastern Washington. Jen Legs is off to the best nine game start of all UP coaches since the Pilots joined D1 in 1958. And he's doing it with a squad that has a variety of new players, transfers, new kids. 
you know, kids Great that job. he had Thank at you. Eastern Washington. And, you know, he's building a culture here, and it's going to take some time. They've had great success so far, uh, but they're far from being where they want to be, and, and he just talks about getting better every single day. Harvey on the floor now for the University of Portland off the bench. Vucinic as well joining the fray for the Pilots. And right now they're in that switching man that Coach Earl talked about. Great job by Vucinic to just tap that back to a teammate. Fresh clock for the Pilots. Heady play. Meadows inside to Vucinic. Blocked inside. Stevens with his second rejection. His 19th and 20th blocks of the season. Stevens, three-pointer. Well, he can shoot that. And Watkins at 5'10", checking in, offensive rebound, but gives it up. Good defense and good hands by Moses Wood. Had the size advantage down low with that. Swinging that ball on the perimeter, the Pilots. Trying to crack the code of the zone. Tyler just can't get it going from the outside yet. The drop continues for the Pilots at about 325, 330. Wide open look, Watson. Look at Stevens going up against, yeah, you got to go up against Harvey. Still can't get it down. Yeah, he'd like to have that one back, I'm yes. sure. Nice job by Watkins to hold his ground and draw the charge. Yeah, heads up defense. Harvey right there's just got a you know, little pull up. Jump stop, pull up, make that little runner. Tried to avoid the contact with a little Euro step, but just too much body. And now Portland's gonna come with a little bit of pressure of their own. A little full court man-to-man. -man. I, I kind of like this in the fact that just picking up the pressure picks up the intensity level a little bit. Both teams kind of chilly right now. 9.30 left to go in this first half, 23-15. Look out. Nice hops by Conway. Could have cow kicked a couple of those fans, but was able to leap right over them. And Portland's in a, a four and a half minute drought. And mm. I was just going to say, this is a really important, I think, possession offensively for them. They've got to get some things going and get some other people involved. You don't want to just settle from the three point line. Svetozarovic also onto the floor for the Pilots. Five on the shot clock. Robertson's just going to keep shooting. That's got to feel good. And he claps his hand saying, let's go. Well, he's really hard on himself. I mean, he, you know, he, he actually is a better three-point shooter than what his percentage is showing so far this season and really can make a difference. Boy, the Pilots needed that one ending the drought. Now VMI is the one that's trying to get off the drought schneid. Ten on the shot clock for Kerfman. And here's Bonham. Nice finish by Ooh. Bonham going right at T-Rob. He is athletic and very quick. Seven points now for Bonham right at his seasonal average. And we're in the first half. Extra pass. Great Good hustle follow. play, you bet. Robertson follows his own miss. Fresh clock. Uh-oh. Into the tall timbers was Harvey. Smart play. Just too deep was Vucinic. Yeah, he got himself too far underneath the basket. Ooh. Smart play by Manns, who got clobbered. And you see how fast this pace is. Both teams want to rebound and get it up and go and shoot a quick shot. I mean, Coach Earl said, first available shot, we're going to shoot it. Svetozarovic tagged with that foul, and it's a big one against the Pilots. Lots of free throws coming back, or coming when we do come back. BMI with the lead.
Back at the Child Center, the visiting VMI Cadets leading Portland 25-18. Jen, it's VMI's first trip to the West Coast in over 40 years. First time facing the Portland Pilots. They look right at home. They sure do, and they brought the nice weather with them for Pete's sakes. And <laughs> when we talked to Coach Earl yesterday, he said he got to check off another state that he's traveled in. So got a chance to go downtown as a group. That's great. I mean, Earl says he's, uh, Coach Earl's been to most of the states in the union, but not Washington and not Oregon. So today he checks this one off the bucket list. And then this club will head up to face Seattle. So the Washington trip checks that one too. Yeah, he's close. So two of three for Manns. 12 points now for Manns. 14 is his career high. Last year, no double figures games, and that's how much he's been helping this VMI team. Well, and I really like the sub with Zoe coming back in the game, giving them some presence inside. Right now, Portland has just settled for outside jump shots. There's the pick. Manns has had himself quite a half. Good job drawing that foul from Svetozarovic. His second, team's sixth. Wood, Austin, back in. Svetozarovic will take a seat. And that's the fourth turnover for the Pilots. And a, you know, a turnover like that, especially a cross-court pass from inside out, often leads to transition buckets. So Portland's got to be real careful Stevens of giving that one up. Stevens had the mismatch, didn't want it. So instead, you go to Manns. And that's a career high for Tanner Manns. You, got, you, you know, you love the 15 points from this kid. And we're still in the first half. Career high for Manns. And there's a lot of time left in this half. Yeah. Biggest lead of the game for VMI. A little floater from T-Rob leaves it short. Good job on the defensive glass by VMI. And actually, I like that, sh you know, shot fake. Get yourself a mid-range jumper when you're not shooting the ball at a high percentage from the three-point line. Boy, how about Steven? Sets the pick, then just stays put, gets it right back, and drills it. Yeah, I mean, that's a pick and pop from a big. And we talked about that matchup being an issue because Zoe just can't defend the three-point line like that. A little slow getting there. 18-3 VMI run. Give the Cadets all kinds of credit. They've scored every which way. Austin able to can the three, and boy, did the Pilots need that. And man, if he can get going, that's going to be a huge uh, factor for Portland because he can really light it up and score in a variety of different ways. Austin now with the six points, couple of threes. T. Rob with the defensive glass, and we're going to go the other way. Here's Meadows. Another charge taken by the Cadets, and their bench is up. Looks like Silvetta is going to get tagged with that foul. Yep. Seventh team foul, his first. But Portland can ill afford to give away possessions with those kinds of plays. I mean, a charge like that is just basically having another turnover, you know, in the game. And right now, when you're down 12, possessions are huge. Got to give yourself a chance with attempts. Honor Huff checking in, wearing number three. He's got the ball for VMI. Kerfman. Stevens on the roll, didn't get it back. Now he'll post, wheel, deal, double team, and scores. And Stevens is versatile and just a big, strong guy. Workhorse inside. Rimming out. Here comes VMI. Sloppy pass by Stevens. Pilots looking to cash in. Again, outside jumper after outside jumper, Jen. Yeah, and you know, the type of defense that VMI plays where they're kind of begging you to shoot that. Sure. Falling right into that trap. You know, and they're just five of 16 from the three-point line. And there's Robinson, heads up play, drawing the charge himself inside. 
T-Rob doing a terrific job. Stevens picks up that foul. His first, only the team's second personal foul. Let's take a look at T-Rob doing his thing. That's I mean, an easy call to yeah. make. <laughs> oh, baby. Good job of just holding his ground. I mean, a lot of times he, he can guard all different spots. A lot of times he's going to be on the big. Sholand on the floor for the Pilots. So Austin cans the three, takes a look at the fans. He's got nine, all of his points coming via the three-point line. Let's see if Portland's got a run in him, Jen. Stevens. There's Huff. And Port Portland fortunate on that. They had a little miscommunication on the defensive end, but great job on the boards. One and done and go the other way. Yep. Robertson does a great job of tangling with Stevens, who picks up his second. That's a big foul right there. You got four minutes left in the half. He's going to have to sit. And he, he brings a different factor. And I would say Shantae Leggins at one point maybe brings Zoe back in because that matchup becomes a little bit different. Great job by Robertson to tangle up with Stevens, hold his ground, and really draw that foul, literally draw that foul. Robinson's a tough guy. I mean, they talk about him in practice all the time. Wood not even close, and here comes Bonham. That's just not a good shot. Step back. Boy, and that's a five-point swing if you look at it. Six-point swing, actually. Missed three, made yep. three. Yep. Hmm. And VMI has just played really loose. I, I mean, I just feel like they're, they're laughing out there, having fun together, really loose. Bonham now with 10 points, his second double-figure game of the season. Great answer by Wood. Misses one, makes one. Yeah, but that shot was way different than the first one they took just a second ago. In rhythm, ball swing. Oh. My goodness. And Kerfman just is even chuckling at this one. Nine triples for VMI. In this half alone, they average 13 makes from beyond the arc a game. My goodness, Jen, they're putting on a clinic. Yep, Portland's got to defend the three-point line a little bit better. Kerfman going hard to the glass. You've got to make him shoot contested from the perimeter or make him put it on the ground. Looking for some help is Bonham. Rose going to give it up. Oh. Offensive rebound, another chance. Bonham will draw the foul from Sholin. Sholin's first. Team's eighth. And VMI has basically led from the get-go. And they're up by 14 with 2.23 left to go in the first half. Pilots want to hit those threes, but VMI has had the answer.
here at the Child Center. You know, Jen, the Portland Pilots come into this game playing good three-point defense. They, they give their foes some trouble defensively from the three-point line. Tonight, though, VMI shooting 47% from beyond the arc. Well, coming in, you know, in a scout, they, they know that's what they're known for. You got to make a little bit of adjustments. I mean, it's one thing. I mean, this is this is what they do. This is the, they fuel their offense by shooting the three and they shoot it fast. So right now, Portland's going to have to make an adjustment of getting a little bit tighter from the three, making them put it on the ground a little bit. And then rebounding's got to be a huge key. They're getting out rebounded 19 to nine right now in the first half. My goodness. Those are stats are going to have to clean up in the second half. Well, and one thing that we talked with uh, Coach Leggins about, he's like, they really kind of get you into this trance of shooting threes. And right now, only three of Portland's baskets are inside the three-point line. And so they're falling right into what, you know, VMI wants to do day in and day out defensively. Mans with his first, team's fourth. If I'm not mistaken, the Pilots have yet to shoot a free throw tonight, and they are one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. They make a living from the free throw line. So far, not tonight. Good take. Great take by Austin, and he went right on that baseline to the rack. Well, and that's a great job. I mean, he set that up by making three previous three-point shots. They got to respect that, and he's so quick, and he can get to the rim. Great job. And that's what Portland needs. They need a variety of different ways to score the basketball. So Rowe picks up his second foul as Austin hits the first free throw of the night for himself and his club. Great job of just driving the baseline off that pump fake. Got to respect, respect that shot. And, I mean, he's a strong guard. He's going to take it right at you. Naduka back on the floor. Austin nearing his seasonal average. He's got 11 so far. He's had a strong first half. And Portland King with a little 1-2-2. Two, two. Step back, bringing down Rain is Kerfman. Tough take and stick. And that's, I mean, you can't defend that. I mean, that's a penetration with a step back falling away. And Austin again, aggressive with the basketball, finding a little seam. And just a smart play. They've got to respect him like we talked about. Now he's putting it on the ground and it's going to create other things. It'll create a drive and kick instead of just swings for three-point shots. So Manns picks up his second foul. He's going to have to sit. And he's come out on fire. Ooh. Nice hustle play by both clubs, actually. And of course, Naduka is involved in that yep. play. He's going to do whatever it takes for his team to win. Austin was initially stripped, but Naduka stayed with that play, so the Pilots will inbound it underneath their own basket. And he's walking a little ginger, gingerly yep, right now. he is. Buck 22 left to go in this first half. Wood, deep three, back rim and off Conway is gonna find Kerfman. Tang on the floor now for VMI. Dan Earl with a quality bench. VMI calls the timeout. 30 second variety. 45 29, the cadets with the lead. And I think this is their biggest lead of the game, Jen. If not, we're close to it. I mean, this has been a, a club that has shown their three-point prowess. We knew that, but they've had a couple of buckets at the rim to loosen things up, but mostly making hay from, you know, deep. Yeah, I mean, right now, they're scoring in all different categories. I mean, they're breaking people down off the penetration. 
They're hitting, hitting from the three-point line, and they've hit so many early threes that the defense has to extend themselves. They're getting by, and there's nobody to help in the paint. So Portland's got to make an adjustment defensively as, as a collective group, not just one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, they've really got to work team defense here, slides over, and then continue to rebound. I mean, we talked about the rebound in the beginning, and right now uh, they're getting out-rebounded. So VMI looking to add to the lead. NBA three. Kerfman thought that was in. And the foul, I believe, going against the pilots and Wood, his second personal. Well, let's let's revisit this. So Dan Earl thought that foul was going to go against Wood. The officials oh. changed that. No, that's a good call. He got two hands right in the back. That's a good call. So Wood will go to the free throw line as the foul is going to go against Tang. And the Pilots will go into the locker room trailing, but if they can kind of own this last 57.7, they, they may feel a little bit better about things. Well, it's stopping a score right here, just being smart. Great job of hitting throws, get a stop defensively, and then come down and score, and close this gap with a little momentum going into half. Wood has been terrific this first half for the pilots. Arnold going to set that screen. Inside look, deep look, and nice take by Rowe. Yeah, Moses Wood's got to get around either three quarter. You can't just stand behind somebody that's got a size advantage you in the paint. Austin. Short, good board by Conway. He has been tough on the boards. Six rebounds now for Conway. He gives you nearly seven. Four seconds left. Kerfman drives. The tip! Uh. Oh! How about that tip by Rowe? And his teammates are letting him know that was sensational. To great beat the tip. buzzer, huh? Yeah, great tip. So the biggest lead of the game belongs to VMI at the break, 49-31. Pilots had to come from way back to defeat Incarnate Word last time out. They're, they have a bigger hole at halftime this time around.
tries. Charles and the Pilots will take home the national championship trophy. If you have fun, you will win. <laughs> and you'll make me very, very happy. <laughs> Let's go. way from whether it was the men's team or the women's team he treated us all equal and he knew how to get the most out of us individually as well as collectively as a team. He was a gentleman, a scholar as they say, but uh, it would be hard not to like Clive. I mean he lit up a room when he came in, you know he's always the featured guy when he was around everybody's talking to him and he just had a great personality. And he treated everyone with respect. Uh, I don't know that I ever saw Clive have a bad day. If he did, it wasn't apparent how genuine he was and, and how he treated people. Tiff? Hey. Tiff came to Portland when it was not cool to be at Portland. And the reason we won this today is because of her. So I just, as long as she knows that, you know that, don't you? I love you. And the only reason I'm here is because of this lady here. <laughs> he thanked me for, uh, you know, helping in the history of the program. And, and the biggest thing I just told, I, blurted back to uh, I love you. I don't know how you could put into words what he's done for me. Um, and so what I try to do is um, just try to get back to the game and honor him by carrying on his legacy in my own way. And I, I pray that he's proud of me. Disappointment and adversity can be catalysts for greatness. Kathy Freeman. Somewhere behind the athlete you've become, and the hours of practices, and the coaches who have pushed you, is a little girl who fell in love with the game and never looked back. Play for her. Mia Hamm. I'd rather regret the risks that didn't work out than the chances I didn't take at all. Simone Biles. It's not necessarily about outworking the person across from me. It's outworking that voice inside of my head that says, I'm too tired, I don't feel like doing it, I can settle. Maya Moore. With a defeat, when you lose, you get up, you make it better, you try again. That's what I do in life. When I get down, when I get sick, I don't want to just stop. Everyone always says never give up, but you really have to take that to heart and really do never definitely give up. Keep trying. Serena Williams. Champions keep playing until they get it right. Billie Jean King. In the minds of an ordinary training day, I try to remind myself that I'm preparing for the extraordinary. Why Portland? Why Portland? Why is this the right time for you? It's a sleeping giant here. It's going to be a very, very special job, and it's going to be a special place where people want to come and watch it and, and, and play basketball here. I'll be on the grind, only way to shine, hey, yeah. I'll be on the grind, only way to shine, way, yeah. As soon as we step over those white lines, it's all business. This place wants to win. There's a lot of support behind us. We just have to put in the work and go do it now. We're the only ones in this circle right in here that believes in us. We think we can do it, we know we can do it, but it's about convincing other people that we can do it as well. Get up. Get up. That's the kind of chip you need to have on your shoulder. You gotta be willing to do whatever it takes to win, and, and you gotta be willing to do whatever it takes for your teammates to win, and then pick them up. Get behind us, get behind this team, because it, it's going to be something special. We're not that same team that we were the last three years. We're not that team, and just, you know, if you don't believe us, just come watch, and you'll see for yourself.
Boy, was it a gorgeous day here in the Rose City or what? We're early December, sunny, warm temperatures. Jennifer Mountain, I'll take it every time. What I don't like is this score, 49-31. The visiting VMI cadets really coming to play and dominating that first half. Well, it may be warm outside, but it's cold inside <laughs> for the pilots. <laughs> really struggling to, to score the basketball, shooting 33% for the game and 31 from the three-point line. And, and we've talked about it. They're just settling for jump shots right now. There's no inside out attack. And when you're not shooting the ball very well, as a collective group, you've got to do something a little bit different. You got to tip your cap to this VMI bunch. They have played with a ton of passion and they have been hot and basically have led wire to wire in the first half. They sure have. And, and really their two main scorers are not the guys that are doing it. Yeah. You know, it's Bonham, it's Manns who came in with the right from the get go with a dunk and two threes to start the game. And uh, Conway too. I mean, just all of them have come out ready to go. They're playing really loose, like I said. I mean, having a lot of fun out there. But I, I would expect Portland to make some adjustments at halftime defensively um, and offensively, quite frankly. But defensively, we can't allow somebody to score 49 points in a game and expect to win. You know, Mike Meadows coming off a career high the last time out with 22 scoreless at this point. Not putting it all on him, but the Pilots need him to get involved. Yeah, they got to share the ball a little bit more, and they've got to take better shots in the half court. I mean, we talked about that as being one of the keys for the game. And, you know, the type of defense that VMI plays is uh, Portland right now has just kind of fallen right into their trap. They've got to make an adjustment, get quality shots, and then got, got to have defensive stops. So the pivotal second half is just moments away. VMI winless on the road, looking for their first victory away from home and leading by 18 as we go into the second half. We'll see what kind of rally the pilots have in them. Stick around. Forty nine thirty one the pilots trailing VMI we're just a few seconds away from the start of the second half it's the most points given up in a half by Portland and you know the most triples the pilots have given up in a game this season is 12 VMI so far has a whole bunch of them and I'm talking about nine yeah and I think they've shot 20 already for the half it's you know, we talked about how good a three-point shooting team they are. We've got to make adjustments. Portland's got to make adjustments. Make them put it on the perimeter and score in different ways. One time this season, VMI has made 22 triples in a game. And they, they kind of have their eyes on, on something like that tonight. And it's going to be incumbent upon this Portland Pilot defense, as you mentioned, J-Mo, to contest 
to get out, flag down those long rebounds off the misses, and somehow, some way, cool this club off. Yeah, their closeouts have got to be quick and hands high, and then be ready to defend the bounce because that's one thing is they hurt him not only from the three-point line, but they the, the guards on the perimeter really broke Portland down and got to the rim uh, and got some points in the paint as well. Boy, when you stop and think about Kerfman and Stevens, the top two scorers for VMI, as you mentioned, not really having that scoring first half, and the other guys carrying the freight, maybe they'll cool off. Odds are with you that they're going to cool off a little. Let's see if Portland can help that cause and get a run going as we start the second half. <laughs> There's Kerfman saying, oh, really? <laughs> well, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, how about that, lady? He's still shaking his head at you. He's got eight points, does Kerfman, but again, he leads this club in scoring at 18 a pop and dangerous. Well, and he's really not a true point guard. You know, talking to Coach Earl, he's kind of taken over that point guard spot, and he's really more of a two guard in the past. So not only leading the, the pack here, but really a scorer. Scorer mentality every time he touches it. Ooh. Ooh, dangerous. Boy, Austin going high for that. Got tagged by Bonham pretty good. His second team's first. You know, VMI said goodbye to their two top guards in Greg Parham and Miles Lewis. They could have played one more year as graduate students, but VMI doesn't have graduate programs. The two starters had to leave. Yeah, it, that was a fun conversation with him yesterday. I mean, I haven't even heard of that before. And with the COVID year, he would have loved to have had them back. So Bonham picking up another foul. So Wood will shoot a couple. Yeah, I've never heard of that either. Yeah. I mean, with COVID and whatnot, obviously those guys can come back and play one more year and right. start a grad program, but there aren't any at VMI. No judgment. I just have never yeah. heard of that. And just getting transfers in, he said, is almost impossible. Yeah, there, that's a great point. You know, so very at a disadvantage, really, I mean, compared to the rest of the conferences out there. Wood now with 15 at his seasonal average, 52-33. Nice pass. Great ball movement. Conway thought that one was true. Robertson, heady play, and here comes Portland. It's really heady play, and we talked about it at, at halftime. Long shots, long rebounds. Guards have got to do their job. Austin. He's got the big mean on, 14 points now for Austin, right at his seasonal average. And he's lighting it up from beyond the arc. He's got a bunch of triples, I think three. And they've got to get some stops. Make it four. Good board. Big possession right here. T-Rob, oh yeah, crowds into it now, baby. Nice response. It's got to start, start down here on the defensive end, though, and every single time they've got to work and they've got to get stops. Good Austin, hands. how about Austin on both ends of the floor? He's in it, he's energized. And that's a Chris Austin that we saw first month. He's kind of disappeared with that energy level. And I love to see that because that kid can really play and can really fill it up fast. 8-0 run in one short minute for the Pilots. They're feeling a little better. Yeah, you saw that coming. Silvetta nicked for the moving screen. His second. Team's first. That hurts the momentum just a little bit. It does, but again, just use that. Get another defensive stop and board and, and go the other way. Make up for it. 52-39, VMI, the Cadets with the lead. Nothing back door for VMI. They live and breathe by the triple. They've got 10 on the shot clock. Boy, I just love that look. I know Conway sticks it, but Steven's so heady to get him the ball. Shoot score. And, he, and Coach Earl talked about how Stevens is such a great passer from the, the center spot. And, you love to see that. I mean, their offenses, they got a little Princeton looks. Good and 
sir. How about that response from T-Rob? Claps his hands in double figures. 11 points to go along with six boards. Here we go. Stevens, my goodness. Back and forth. Well, you can't trade buckets with them, that's for sure. And, and Portland's done a nice job. They've just got to get stops at the defensive end. Austin off the pick. Had a little window, decides to take the floater and scores. Chris Austin has been terrific this game, 16 now. And great job in this half. Oh. Wood picks up his second foul, team's second. You'd like to see Portland put together a few stops here get this into single digits by that 12 minute mark. What a game Austin, the transfer from Fordham is having. And I like this matchup here. They put Robinson on Stevens. And he's, uh, he's undersized, but don't, don't let that fool you. That guy's strong and he's gonna battle him. Ah. Bottom, as all the defenders left him, he decided to take the three, misses. Fortunate there. Austin. Cut off, good defense interior-wise by Kerfman. Plenty of time on the shot clock for Robertson and company. One extra pass, Austin feeling it. Short, Sholin. Good board. Great, oh, baby! Oh, yeah! How about that? Christian Sholin, how do you do? Known for his three-point shooting, but instead attacks that miss and then flushes it. And here it is right here. Great offensive board and just a great throwdown. Pilots within 10, crowds into it. Here we go. Boy, Sholin's jam really got this crowd into it. Jen, what is Portland doing better in this second half to get back into this ball game? Well, the rebound in the basketball, number one, and getting out in transition and making the defense, you know, a little bit slow to the start as far as defending the ball. And, you know, they've got to continue to put pressure. I like the matchups inside. Good hands by the pilots, though. And quite frankly, their intensity level is just different than it was in the first half. And that's what they needed. They've got to put stops together. You are reading my mind. I'm not saying the pilots were flat in the first half, but, but the sense of urgency is clearly different early in this second half. So we're going to take a quick media timeout. 58-46, BMI with the lead, but the Pilots with the hot start to the second half and back in it.
Back at the Child Center, Mike Meadows and the Portland Pilots trying to put together one heck of a comeback. Scoreboard is wrong, so the lead is actually 12 as Meadows is going to pick up that foul. The lead is 12 for VMI. Well, and VMI is just so quick off the cut. Portland Bell. Number 25, Mike Meadows, his first personal 13. Kerfman did a great job of swinging it and cutting to the rim. A little backdoor play. Meadows with his first, team's third. And again, Mike Meadows scoreless at this point in the game. Usually gives you about 11 points a pop. And coming off a career high 22 points last time out just really hasn't had the opportunity to score either. An 0 for 3 from the three-point line, I think, for the game right now. And here you see VMI in their man-to-man -man switch. Kerfman now in double figures. Again, this is a Portland team that just will not quit. 19 points now for Austin. The bench is really energized, and that's a good sign for the Pilots. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, the culture that he's building here, these guys are bought in, and it doesn't matter. They're down 20 to up 20. They're going to play hard. They're going to compete for each other, and they, they truly, I think, really care about each other. And they, and they think they can be pretty darn good. And that's half the battle is belief. So Kerfman gets around Meadows, extra pass, triple, back rim and off. Mike with the rebound. Pilots with a chance to go even ever closer and cut that lead to under 10. Sholin, dribble, misses badly. And that's, uh, you know, to me right there, that's just trying to do a little too much. Got to swing that ball. It's not that he can't shoot that, but get it back and not pull the three off a dribble. Penetration. Should mention that Wood picked up his second personal foul a few moments ago. He's going to have to be clever the rest of the way to stay on the floor. Oh, Sholin comes over to help, thought he got all ball. Instead, Stevens will go to the line. Sholin picks up his second. And actually smart double team right there coming over from the weak side. You see Moses just really holding his ground and great timing. Oh, he might have got him on the arm. That was a good call. I like the idea by yep. Sholin. Stevens wanted to take Wood really deep. I think it was a good call. Yep. So impressed with the play of Jake Stevens, preseason all-conference in the Southern Conference. On both ends of the floor, he is a complete package. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. Arnold back onto the floor, you know, and it's kind of a self-sabotage to, you know, kill the momentum. Couple of plays for the pilots. Yeah, just unfortunate trying to go too fast, trying to do too much. You know, you get that momentum, you get excited about it, you gotta stay within yourself. Stevens, offensive rebound. Watkins, fake, dish, Stevens, just misses the and one. Well, and right now, Portland is in a defensive scramble every time the ball is touched. Nice little, penetration and kick, pump fake, got two defenders in the air. And Portland fortunate that that's not an and one. I'll say as Sholin picks up his third, team's sixth. Stevens with the chance to go into double figures and does. Good free throw shooter as now VMI 
will come at you with five in double figures. So pick your poison defensively. Well, and like I said, I mean, they're in a defensive scramble every time the ball's being swung and just not keeping the ball handler in front of them. 63-49, the lead back to 14 for VMI as they've taken a couple of punches from the pilots and counterpunched themselves. Wood follows the own shot and gets it home. Nicely played by Mo Wood. You know, that's a great play. Uh, you know, not sh first attempt, not a great shot, but way to follow it and make something happen. And he probably would agree with that as well when he watches film. But boy, I'll tell you, VMI just comes right back at you. Tang with the tough bucket inside. Well, they are aggressive in every spot. Not backing down. All right, with a lot of tempo. Stevens picks up his third. So he'll take a seat. And that could be real big for Portland. This next three and a half minutes here, crucial. They've got to get this thing to, to, to single digits by just getting stops, being smart, and not allowing them to go on a big, big run here. Robertson all by himself on this weak side. Now he's got some company. Step back, tough three. Austin, crucial offensive rebound. Meadow, oh, Mike Meadows had a shot that he stepped into, and it was a good take, but misses. Yeah, he needed that one. Nice play. Oh, Mike Meadows defensively. Wow, take that. Well, I love to see this. You miss that shot, but you hustle back and you make a huge defensive play. Great clean block. You're reading my mind so Meadows doesn't put chin to chest or powder or anything. He just goes down and plays hard. Yeah, I've been real impressed in talking with him multiple times. Big team guy. Great job by T-Rob forcing the tie-up possession. Stays with VMI, but that's a hustle play from your veteran. Absolutely. And that's what he brings day in and day out. That kid's going to compete. He's going to sell his body out for his teammates. Yeah, we'll see if they have the possession arrow facing the wrong way because it looks like the pilots are going to inbound it. Yeah, the, uh, the arrow is incorrect. Yeah. And now we'll correct things as the pilots will try and cash in. Need a great shot here. Austin feeling it from beyond the arc. Not able to get that one down. So here comes VMI. Baseline cut off. Sholin doing a nice job there. Playing in foul trouble, but stayed home. Here comes Meadows. Twelve minutes left to go in the second half. Pilots have been chasing this entire game. I'd love to see somebody cut to the middle of the floor. Great offensive rebound. T-Rob, fresh clock. More jump shots for the Pilots. There it goes inside. There's the kick. Sholin's going to try it again. Short. Good look. Yeah, it's good look. And you know, out of an inside out. I like that attempt. Quick shot by Conway. Good offensive board by Tang. He's had some nice shifts off the bench for VMI. He really has. Oh, that's deep. What I'll say. Scrum for the loose ball. Meadows is able to corral it. Pilots have gone cold. T-Rob fixes that. Boy, how big was that triple? Huge. And they've just got to, I mean, every time they make a run, VMI has responded. 14 points now for T-Rob. Turnover, Meadows. And the block yes. is going to go against Kerfman. And that's a good take by Meadows. You know, he could have dished that off, but great job of just getting himself going and getting himself to the free throw line. So the pilots hanging around, 65-54 is our count.
That triple was huge in the cause. Pilots wanting to make that comeback. Sixty five fifty four Portland looking to carve into that deficit. Ty, uh, Tyler Robertson has just been a huge factor in this second half. Yeah, 14 points, eight rebounds and it's the other stuff. It's diving on the floor. It's hitting big shots. It's, you know, getting the getting the group together and, and being a leader. I mean, he just does it all for this squad. And right now we can get it. You know, he can get a game to single digits, which we talked about at that before the 10 minute mark. So that's the first point of the game for Mike Meadows. Misses the second free throw attempt. He's a great free throw shooter as Meadows, a 90% guy, so that's a bit of a surprise. 65-55, plenty of time left in this one. Oh. Unfortunate, he was standing Boy, out of bounds. Just unlucky for Harvey. Well, I gotta tell you, the, the defensive energy is so much better in this half. And you can just see everybody, team defense, sliding over. You got T-Rob coming over for the block. And again, <laughs> just unfortunate that he's out of bounds. They're out outscoring him 23 to 16 in this half so far. Stevens on the floor, remember, playing in foul trouble. Oh! Sholin with a huge block. Christian has had the dunk that got everybody up and that block. Robertson, short. Boy, how about Naduka just doing his thing? Yep. Sholin, can he finally hit? Yes! <laughs> and Shante Leggins was praying up to the stands. 65-58, <laughs> it's the closest the Pilots have been in forever. 10 minutes left to go. 7-0 run in less than a minute. Let's and it, see if the Pilots have a defensive stance. And it's all started down here. Their defense has fueled the offense. Sholin's really got these guys going. Got a lot of momentum. Aha, good job. Turnover goes against Bonham. Everybody is up, including the Pilot bench. You can see Sholin coming over from the weak side. Just great timing. It's the closest the Pilots have been, I believe, since 25 to 18 in the first half. And you love to see him get going from the, from the outside because he's just such a great shooter and he's really struggled at times. Ah. Robertson looking for the block. Look at the quick hands by T-Rob. <sighs> T-Rob pleading the case, saying he knocked it off the knee of Bonham, but what a hustle play by Robertson. Super hustle play. I just don't think the official was in a position to see that. And they certainly can't go review that. What a play by T-Rob. All right, let's inbound it. Good tip. They got numbers. Wood, Mike, Meadow. 
Can't get it down. Unlucky. Oh, boy, did the pilots need that one. Meadows couldn't get the floater down. There's a walk. You bet. And there's Robinson right there picking up the charge. Again, just smart play. Got the offensive player off his feet. Held his ground. So the charge, not the true turnover, but the charge is going to go against Manns, his third. And I don't know if that went off the leg after seeing the replay, so good call. Got a mismatch down low. Sholin, feeling it. Wow. Leg says he's one of the best shooters he's seen ever, and Sholin has hit a couple of threes just like that. Look at the score now. And he's got eight points on the night. Stevens, big body is Stevens, triple team. Oh. A lot of time left on the shot clock. Pilots have got to stay home defensively. Now just six on the shot clock for Kerfman. Little floater, battle for the rebound. Sholin has been absolutely awesome this second half on both ends of the floor, battling. And I'll tell you, the defensive intensity, the adjustments that they've made at halftime, and the rebounding has been huge. Conway whistled for that foul. I mean, Portland right now on the boards at both ends, they didn't do that one time in the first half. I got you. Every single time down, everybody's crashing, and look at what's happened. It's a four-point game. 10-0 run. VMI. Led by a ton at halftime, 49-31. And a complete switcheroo this second half. Wood takes the pick. Meadows, it's good D by Watkins. <laughs> They're gonna say no to Sholin's dunk. <laughs> <laughs> what has gotten into you, Christian? Oh, my goodness. So Conway got Sholin before that explosive baseline jam. Oh, baby. I have not seen that explosiveness from him all season long. And goodness. Goodness is right. He is putting them on his shoulders and putting on a show. Big miss. Sholin with his career high for the Pilots. Eight points. He's been awfully quiet the last couple of games and has come to play tonight. Well, and this could be huge for him. Good board. Big board by Naduka. Yep. Thought he might have overrun it for a second, but he snags it and is looking for a shooter. Wood keeps the dribble alive. Robertson backing up the kick. The triple! Holy smokes, we got a one-point game, and Wood's got 20. This crowd is going nuts. The coaching staff is greeting the team at half. Chest bumping. Oh, baby, basketball back on the bluff. This has just been a blast. Woohoo! Come back for the stretch run.
Legs calls Mo Wood the silent assassin. This crowd is awfully loud for the silent assassin. How good has he been tonight? Oh, terrific. Scored in multiple facets, inside out, hitting big shots when they need it. And just athleticism and defending. He's had to defend inside, outside. I mean, complete player, and they've gotten themselves in a great position to win this ball game. Wood's career high is 21. He's quickly approaching that with 20. Let's see if BMI's got an answer. 7.07 left to go in this second half, dominated by the Pilots. Here's Stevens, guarded by Wood. The drive, the kick, another missed three. It has been quite the drought yes, for six. BMI. 6.15 and counting in terms of a scoring drought. And the foul is going to go against number 24, Mans. His fourth. And that's a big foul right there. Yep. He really got them going. And the other thing in that six minutes, 15 seconds, is five turnovers. And and you really look at the board situation and what Portland's doing on the boards at both ends has really gotten themselves back to this ball game. Free throws where Portland really makes hay, not kind on occasion as Robertson misses his first offering of the night. That could have tied this game. Seven for 10, but Portland's usually better than that. Got to hit those tosses. Stevens wants the high pick. Instead, it's a huge stick by Mans. Mans with 18. That's a big, big answer. Yeah, big swing too, because you miss free throws and then you give up a, yep. a shot. Exactly. I still love the momentum and what's, what, what they've done this half. You just got to keep playing off of it. Seven on the shot clock for Robertson. Ooh. Naduka misses. And that was Moses Wood on the boards again. Almost got that. Step back. And one in Stevens. Make sure the momentum swings right back in the VMI's favor. Well, so, cre credit them. They have answered. They have answered every time. So Sholand with the foul, and you look at the missed free throw by Robertson. Usually he's a guy that makes those free throws, and that would have given Portland the lead. Instead, now you're looking at a six-point VMI lead, maybe seven. Yeah, big miss. And then, you know, combined with a no block out at this end on this last shot, a little bit too uh, outmatched down low. A lot of time left in the ball game. A lot of time. 71-64. Crucial possession here offensively for Portland. Got to get a great shot. 14 points now for Stevens right at his seasonal average. This is a big possession. Just in terms of the guys feeling good about the effort again on the comeback trail. Robertson. Big stick. Yep. So Robertson with 16 points now and nine rebounds. Pilots need a defensive stance. They're gonna get it. Good board. Austin is gonna leave it for Wood. He's gonna go at Stevens. There's the kick. Meadows, back rim and off. And the foul is gonna go against Robertson. That is his third. And a good look for Meadows, just can't find the range tonight. Yeah, he's had a couple opportunities this second half. You know, ball's gone down low and it's a nice kick out. Great opportunity to shoot the three and a good time to shoot the three. You bet. And just has not knocked him down. And a shot he can hit. Eighth team foul for the Pilots as Arnold will toe the line. 4.52 left to go in this game. Arnold doesn't shoot many free throws. That was a big one.
73-66, VMI 12 for 14 from the free throw line. And if they win this game, that's going to be one of the big, yeah. besides the triples, that's going to be big. Yep. I mean, free throws are huge. Ball was knocked away. You're good, Christian. Robertson. Austin, all the way to the rack. Ball blocked. Wait a second. That foul is going to go against VMI. The cadets thought that was all ball, and they were going the other way. I think that's a good call. So Arnold is whistled for his first foul. Let's take a look. Great first step getting to the rim. Yeah, he totally got hit on the arm. That's a great call. Explo Man, he's explosive to the rim. So Austin, two for two going into this toss. Make it three for three. Again, the Pilots leading the United States in made free throws and sixth in free throw percentage. This is an area where they usually come out on top. Yeah. They've been good, not great tonight. Well, and missed a couple at crucial times. Yep. Two possession game, though. Foul's going to go against Wood. They're going deep inside to Stevens to see if he can take advantage of the mismatch. Well, we talk about Moses Wood. I mean, guarding, now he's guarding the center. He's guarding, you know, yeah. guards. And, and it's been a matchup situation for Portland against Stevens. They just have not been able to find somebody that can really keep him off the block. Boy, and the rolls are going VMI's way too. Stevens, who now has 15 points, one over his seasonal average. <laughs> Clanks a little bit, but they both go down. You know, and the free throw line is really where they're holding it because they're two of 15 from the field, you know, in the last few wow. minutes here. Just got to keep them off the line. Austin. Extra pass, Sholin. Robertson. Oh. Oh, heartbreaker for the Pilots. Heartbreaking sequence for the Pilots. God, you love the effort, though, man. They're playing hard, and they're really going for it. Wow. Two, two tips. Just in and out. The bench was up, ready to explode. Now it's defense time for the Pilots. Kerfman, triple, you bet! And that's a dagger right there. He's got 13 points on the night, and that's a huge shot. Wow. Five-point swing. The lead is 10 with 3.31 left to go. What a game this has been, though. The ebbs and flows. Yep. Sholin. You, you look at VMI's record at four and four, but all of their losses have been eight points or less. They're in every game. They battle like crazy. And they're looking to seal the deal for their first ever win against a WCC team. So Robertson will pick up his fourth foul. Tenth team foul. T. Rob with his third. More free throws for VMI. It just seems moments ago that the Pilots were only down by one with the chance to grab the lead with free throws. Now you look up and the lead is 10 for VMI.
Back at the Child Center, stretch run time. The lead was one for VMI a few minutes ago, but free throws have really helped the cadet cause. And it's ballooned back to a 10 point cushion for VMI. But how about the game Chris Austin has enjoyed? Man, he, especially this second half, has hit huge shots. And you, you like to see that because I think he struggled a little bit as of late, getting a little confidence back and, you know, just taking that momentum into the next few games here. 21 points for Austin, one off of his career high as Kerfman gets another free throw down for VMI. And after a quiet first half, Kerfman and Stevens have come alive in this second half for the Cadets. 15 points now for Kerfman. Yeah, we talked about it at halftime. You know, each one of them had five points and not huge factors, and they've certainly come into this second half and made that adjustment. 7-0, VMI run, getting well from the charity stripe. 10 on the shot clock for Wood. Changes hands, dumps it, Meadows. Mike has not been able to find the hot hand tonight. No, nope. and he's had good looks at it. Meadows with one point. And Portland's gonna have to extend the pressure here a little bit. I mean, BMI's smart just using clock each time down right now. Stevens, again, going right at Mo. Good double there, even better finish. And that double's gotta come sooner because Moses Wood can't hold his ground against the size of right. Stevens. Yep. 82-68, two minutes left to go. It's just crazy to think of the pilots were on the line ready to take the lead via the one and one, and T-Rob missed the front end. There was another opportunity for VMI, or excuse me, for the pilots to grab the lead on a one and one. Missed that. And there's the hustle play that really could put a capper on this one, Jen. Yeah, that was a big possession right there. All right, so I'm gonna shine a little light on Kristen Scholen, who for the most part at this, uh, at this point in the season has been really quiet. Yeah. And today he showed some serious life on both ends of the floor. He did some things today that I haven't seen him do all year long. And you know, explosiveness, energy, and hitting some big shots. And, you know, Coach Leggins talked about how great of a shooter he was. And I think, you know, a lot of times you press as a mm, shooter mm -hmm. and just trying to do too much. And I feel like this group of guys wants it so bad that sometimes that can put even a little bit more pressure on you. Sholin with his best night wearing a pilot uniform with eight points and some defensive blocks. I mean, it wasn't just shooting, right. it was at both ends of the floor. What a second half for the Portland Pilots. Oh. Nice try by Austin, floater. Bodies flying all over the place. And another triple, Bonham gets it down. 15 points now for Bonham. Certainly his season high. What are you taking away from this game, J-Mo? Well, it comes down to the defensive effort. If they would have had the, the effort in the first half that they've played within this second half, I think this would be probably a different story. Uh, I think that they're going to take away some nice individual performances from people, some confidence builders for certain people. Um, and they did some really nice things. I mean, this VMI group came in here ready to go and has played really well. I've been impressed with them. They've got inside-outside presence. You know, I think inside presence right now for Portland is, is a big factor going, especially into conference play. They've got to find somebody that can produce in the paint. Austin with a new career high and 23 points. What a great uh, game for Chris. He's been terrific.
So a 445 field goal drought for the Portland Pilots basically has put this thing to bed for VMI. VMI foul number 10, Camden Kerfman, his second. Kerfman with his second. VMI will head up to Seattle with their first road win of the year, their first ever victory against a WCC opponent. It's the first time these two clubs have ever met. And I like the way Dan Earl's club plays basketball. I do too. I mean, hard nosed, can shoot the three. They have an inside guy that can go in and out. Multiple inside guys actually, and, and really some guys that can really create. Okay. This will be the Pilots' first home loss of the year. And remember, they're going into that 10-day break with finals. And they'll have something to think about. Good hustle play by Naduka. Finally, Mike gets one home. He just kind of throws his hands up like, oh my gosh, it's just been one of those nights. Yeah, you feel for the guy because he's out there competing and he's doing other things, but he had opportunities, I think, to hit big shots and just came up a little bit short. You gotta love the competitiveness. You gotta love the response. You know, both teams really, I mean, back and forth. I mean, basketball is a game of runs and it's how you respond to them, you know, that creates, you know, the kind of team that you're gonna be. And I think Coach Leggins is gonna be really happy with how, how they've competed. You know, not happy with certain things, but uh, the defensive effort in the second half has been tremendous and, and, and did a great job on the boards. Just to feel the energy back in this building, oh, Jennifer yeah. Mountain, yeah. just to hear this crowd, and it's a good one tonight, to watch that bench, to feel the energy, to witness that kind of excitement again here at the Child Center, pretty special. It really is, and, and I think that they're really building something special here. I mean, it's gonna take some time, like we talked about, but he's got high character guys, quality guys. I mean, we've had many opportunities to sit down and talk with them, and I've been really impressed and uh, they're doing it the right way, and I think Portland's gonna have a special product here in the next few years. It's a process, folks. Yeah, and don't count them out of anything right now. I think they're growing and getting better. No question. As but, Meadows picks up a second. I mean, you're absolutely right. I don't think I've, in the last year, felt the, I mean, obviously with COVID, it was a little bit different, but uh, the energy in this building and just the feel from the group is, is completely different. If you've got a seat behind the pilot bench, you're gonna to wanna to move back about three yeah. or four rows because those guys don't sit down. Yeah, you need to be row 10 or above. Yeah, they, they're, they're not gonna sit down. And when they pulled within one and we went to break, they were going bonkers. It was neat to see. It yep. gives me the chills. I mean, th this is a club that talks about changing culture, the pilots, and I, I know the result is not what they wanted, but this was this was another step in that direction. Absolutely. So we'll slow things down with the block call going against Bonham. His fourth. Mike Meadows at the line to shoot. So Meadows will shoot a couple. But I guarantee you, this isn't a, a moral feel-good moment for the pilots. They're going to go into the locker room, and, and they're going to say, darn it, we had them. We let them get off the hook. Yeah, I mean, abso you're absolutely right. I mean, they had them right where they wanted, made a great run, and then just missed opportunities offensively and then not you know, continuing to get stops. They're, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot on this one and not be happy with it. And maybe that'll fuel the fire even a little bit more to get off to a better start. Yeah, total different tenor of this game in the second half. No oh, yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. So more free throws for VMI. So VMI doing a great job at the free throw line. They're 17 for 20. The most free throws they've made, the most free throw attempts attempts this season, Jen. 
Well, I mean, they've got guards that can really, really penetrate right now. And especially in that first half, Portland had a hard time keeping them in front. You know, now it's time and score situation. Yep. Five and double figures for VMI. Three and double figures for the Portland Pilots, led by Austin with 23, Wood with 20. And Austin just got another <laughs> one. Yep. So add to the collection, add to his career high, 26 now for Chris. And Coach Leggins is saying no fouls. Sholin will foul out after his pilot best. I'm happy for him. I mean, I Me think too. he got some confidence tonight. I think that he's, he's pressed a little bit and struggle because the guy could shoot it. And, and I saw some things today that I didn't expect to see from him. Scoreless the last two games, Sholin, and comes up with eight big points. And blocks. Yep. Defensive, you know, stops. I mean, uh, I, I really liked his effort this evening. Just a terrific job by VMI at the charity stripe. Along with those first half threes, big difference maker, T-Rob drills the triple. 19 now and 10 rebounds, double-double for Robertson. Another stellar performance by the veteran, but that'll do it. Pilots fall short, had a great second half, but just couldn't quite get over the hump. Yeah, I love the effort in the second half, and Coach Leggins is going to be real happy with that. They'll be able to go back, watch some film, and learn from it. Now they got to put two halves of that kind of effort on the boards especially and, and learn from it. Defensively, much better than we've seen we in the last few stats. games. But credit VMI, man. Every time Portland made a run at them, they came right back. They did. And they were very solid. They took some big body blows in that second half. But VMI is able to come away with the victory. What kind of numbers jump out at you, Jen? Well, you look at the three-point you know, percentages, and they shot 30. They were 15 of 36 from the three-point line. And then you look at the rebounds. I know that stat, 42 to 27. But I'll tell you, that second half was a lot different for Portland. Um, and then Portland shot 40% and, and, and 18 of 46 from the three-point line. That's a lot of three-point attempts. And you just got to shoot the ball a little bit better if you're going to take that many. Entertaining game for sure. But it's a game that goes in VMI's favor, 90 to 82. Huge road win for the key, uh, the Kidets who push their record over 500, win their first road game of the year. That's special for these guys as they head up to Seattle. For Jennifer Mountain, our entire broadcast crew, I'm Ed Schott saying so long from the bluff. Thanks for joining us for Portland Pilot Hoops. Have a great weekend. Stay healthy, stay safe, and see you down the road. VMI wins it 90-82. to 82.